Honors Algebra 2, Chapter 3, Section 5. We're actually going to do 5 and 6 today. We're going to start uh, talking about matrices. So we're going to understand what a matrix is and perform uh, basic operations of matrices. So a matrix is just a rectangular arrangement of numbers and rows and columns. And so we put them inside these brackets. And we put them into rows, so like A, B, C, D would be an example of a matrix with variables. So we have rows and columns. So the dimension is the number of rows and columns. So it's said R by C. So you stick the rows first and then columns second. So a row matrix is a single row and then so many numbers A, B, C, dot, 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 continuing on to Z we'll call it. Um, would be a row matrix, one single row. Uh, row by uh, column, the column matrix would be as many rows as you want, but one column. So that's a, these are two special kinds called the row and column matrix. So this would be going straight down. Then we have a square matrix, and square matrix we're going to use a lot. It's an n by n matrix, just meaning we have the same number of rows as we do columns. So I'll give you an example with numbers here. Uh, negative 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, negative 1, 6, 7, and negative 4. So this right here would be a square matrix. It's a, a 3 by 3 would be the size of this matrix. 3 rows by 3 columns. So we're add and subtract matrices must have the same dimension. So if you're going to add and subtract them, the dimension's got to be equivalent. Um, so all you do is you add and subtract the entries in the corresponding positions. And that's why they have to be the same dimension, because you're finding the corresponding positions. So if I take a 2, 4, 6, and then a negative 1, 3, 0, and let's subtract another matrix. So the other matrix I just, I'm making up, it needs to be the same size. So if we are going to subtract these, we subtract the corresponding position. So this right here is row 1, column 1. This 2 is row 1, column 1. So the first row, first column. So the other matrix has a row 1, column 1 of 0. So if I do 2 minus 0, the result is 2. And you just go through all the corresponding positions. So 4 is row 1, column 2. Row 1, column 2, here is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. And you can just go through all the corresponding positions. So 6 minus negative 4. Be careful of your signs. So 6 minus a negative 4 is actually plus. So we're at 10. And then we'll continue a little faster for the second row. So second row will be negative 1 minus 1 or negative 2. 3 minus a negative 2 would be 5. And then 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So this would be the result. Another 2 by 3 matrix where you just take the, the corresponding positions and uh, add it or subtract them. A scalar multiplication is when you're going to multiply the entire matrix by, matrix by one value, a scalar. Uh, so you're going to enlarge it or dilate it, we could say. So then multiply each entry level by the scalar value. So some students think of this as a uh, kind of like a distributed property. So if I do 1 half times 3, 4, negative 1, 2, 5, negative 6, we'll say. I'm just making this up. You just multiply that 1 half. This 1 half gets multiplied to each entry to make the new matrix. And if we do that, we get 3 halves, 2, negative 1 half, 1, 5 halves, and negative 3 would be the result. That's scalar multiplication. So we can do a combination of scalar multiplication, adding, subtracting of matrices. And that's all of 3, 5. So I'm going to get 3, 6 in here as well. 3, 6, and we're going to multiply matrices. And this is the confusing operation. When you multiply two matrices, the column of the first matrix 
must equal the rows of the second. So they don't need to be the same size like they were for uh, adding and subtracting, but the column of the first matrix, so that's this one, M by N matrix, needs to be the same as the rows in the second one. So when you're looking at this, when you're setting up the sizes of the dimensions, these two numbers need to be the same. Column the first, rows the second need to be identical. When you do that, the resulting matrix is the rows of the first one and the columns of the second one give you your answer. That's what size the answer would be. And so if we look down here to figure out what size would each of these be if we multiply these together, could you, first of all, and two, if you did, what would the size be? So for this first one here, you look for the column of the first, rows of the second, are they the same? They're not. So we can't multiply these. Can't multiply these matrices. The second one we have 5 and 5. So because those are the same, we look at the outer two to know the result is a 4 by 2. That's just the size of the answer. 4 rows, 2 columns. And similar here, 2, 2, those are the same, so our answer is going to be another square matrix, 3 by 3 would be the result. So the result size changes. You look at the rows of the first, columns of the second to figure out your answer. Now the process of multiplying, which is not easy. To multiply matrices, you multiply each row by the corresponding column entries. So we're taking these two, 2 by 2. So again, 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2, we can multiply them and the answer is going to be a 2 by 2. And so that sometimes will help me. So I'm going to multiply A times B, the result is going to be a 2 by 2. Um, so two rows, two columns of the result. Now in doing that, we take the row of the first matrix times the column of the second matrix. When you're writing that, writing that out, you multiply 2 times 3 plus 1 times negative 5. So you multiply the first number in the row by the first number in the column, and then you add to it the second number in the row by the second number in the column. That right there is one entry. That is one entry in this matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix we're trying to find right here. So if I go through the second column, so first row, second column, I'm doing 2 times negative 1 plus 1 times 2. So this pattern here is confusing to first uh, get out. Hang up, but once you do, it's not too bad. So, second row now, first column. So that's going to be 5 times 3 plus 3 times negative 5. If we think backwards about it, this spot right here, this spot is in the second row, second column. So, to find this entry, we want to use the second row and the second column. So you multiply that, 5 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2. And there's some patterns within these entries you should get a hang on. So here you can see from left to right that these both have the same 2, 1, 2, 1. And then up and down you can see they have the 3, 3, negative 5, negative 5. They're sharing some of the common numbers in the rows and columns we answer. The answer we get is when we actually find the sum, so this is going to be 6 plus negative 5, or 1, and then a negative 2 plus 2, or 0, 15 plus negative 15, or 0, and then negative 5 plus 6, which is 1. And this is actually a special matrix we're going to call, uh, or find out about later on, it's actually called the identity matrix, I. Uh, the one one zero zero. So the downward columns ones. All the other numbers are zeros. This is the identity matrix. We'll define that later on. But this is how you multiply matrices. So we're gonna do one more of these. I'm gonna call it good. 
So for this one, let's do a three by two. So three, two, one, negative two, zero, four. So this is a three by two. So the other one to make this work has to be a two by something else. Let's just make it a two by two. So one, negative two, zero, three. And notice how the sizes do not have to be the same. It, it matters that these columns match the rows. So now we're going to go through that process, taking row by column. So that's 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0. And if you're not quite seeing where I'm going to put this, it does help a lot of students to say, OK, this is going to be a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 2. So our answer is a 3 by 2 taking the outer ones. And so figure out what our answer is going to be. It's going to be 3 by 2. So 3 rows, 2 columns. So now I have a size. Now I have an idea of where these entries or values will go. So continuing, let's do first row, second column. So 3 by negative 2 plus 2 times 3. Second row, first column, 1 times 1 plus negative 2 times 0. Second row, second column, 1 times negative 2 plus negative 2 times 3. Hopefully that shows up good enough for you. And then third row, first column, 0 times 1 plus 4 times 0. And last, we have the third row, second column. 0 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3. So just evaluate this. So what do we have here? 3, negative 6 and 6 would be 0. 1, 0, so it's 1. Negative 2 and negative 6, so negative 8. 0 and 12. So this would be the result. A 3 by 2 matrix. So that's how you multiply matrices. Let's add a problem uh, for multiply matrices for you to try tonight. Let's see if we can check to make sure you are on target. So let's multiply 3, 2, 1, 0 by 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2. So go ahead and multiply those together and turn that in when you walk in and we will check to make sure that you're on target. So again, we talked about adding, subtracting, uh, multiplying by scalar, and then multiplying matrices. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.